Hi guys, today we're going to go through the physics of roller coasters. Applying the concepts of gravitational potential energy, kinetic energy and work done by friction. So when dealing with roller coasters without friction, the total energy at any point is equal to the sum of the gravitational potential energy and the kinetic energy at that point. So let's apply this to a problem. At point A, a roller coaster of total mass 3000 kilograms it's moving at a speed of 2 meters per second. What speed will it reach at point B, which is 15 meters lower? Well, first let's think about the total energy at A. Well, it's the sum of the gravitational potential energy, which is mgh, plus the kinetic energy, which is half mva squared, the velocity at A. The total energy at B is going to equal the kinetic energy at B, which is equal to a half times the mass times uh, the velocity at b squared. And these two groups of energy, so the total energy at a and the total energy at b, by the conservation of energy, these terms here must be equal to these here. Now all we need to do is put the numbers in. The only thing we don't know is the velocity at b. And by rearranging, uh, and solving for b, we find that b is 17.2 meters per second. So what about roller coasters with friction? Well, the total energy is equal to the gravitational potential energy plus the kinetic energy and the work done against friction. So let's have a look at a different problem. At point A, a roller coaster of mass 3,000 kilograms is moving at 1 meter per second. If it reaches the speed of 12 meters per second at B, which is 15 meters lower, what is the average frictional force given that the, the, the track distance from A to B is 32 meters? So again, thinking about the total energy at A, well, it's equal to the gravitational potential energy plus the kinetic energy. The total energy at B is going to equal to the kinetic energy at B uh, plus also the work done against friction. And by the conservation of energy, total energy at A must equal the total energy at B, so we can formulate this equation here from this and from this. Now if we just put the numbers in, uh, the only thing we don't know is the work done against friction. So by rearranging all this, we're going to end up with uh, a value for the work done. We find that the total work done against friction uh, is 220,950 joules. We know that work done is equal to force times by distance. We also know our distance is 32 meters, stated here. So the work done equal to the force times the distance. We know the work done, which is here. We know the distance here. So by rearranging our equation, we can find out the force. We find the average resistive force is 7,092 newtons. If you found this video useful, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Bye for now.